Ladies and gentlemen, our stars tonight in our dramatic production are two fine performers who have flown in from Hollywood just to be with us. John Odiak, who, by the way, is making his television debut, and Teresa Wright. And I think that we have just the play for them to do. I guess you've undoubtedly all heard about the fabulous money that some football players make and the big jobs a few of them get after their playing days are over. Well, I guess maybe you think that they're pretty lucky, don't you? How about the hometown hero who never does get into the big money and the big jobs? I mean, the fellows who wind up out of a job and out of money. I've got some news for you. Some of them think that they're lucky, too. Albert McCleary has devised a drama about one of these fellows. It's called The Luckiest Day of My Life. It was written by Thomas Coley and William Rourke. Miss Wright plays Mary, and Mr. Hodiak plays a fellow named... Well, suppose he tells you about it himself. Here they are. My name's Steve Pulaski. You don't know me, but a lot of people did once, at least around a town in the name of Housatonic Falls, Massachusetts. But I'm not going to talk about those days. I'd like to tell you about the time a few years ago when I had exactly eight cents in my pocket. The mills around town were shut, and I didn't have a job. I didn't have a friend in the world. If anybody had told me it was the luckiest day of my life, I think I'd have hit him. I've been walking around for hours trying to forget how hungry I was. As I was crossing through the square, I saw something lying in the path. Aren't you Steve Pulaski? Yeah. Well, for heaven's sake. You wouldn't remember me, but I'm Mary Rogers. Oh? We went to high school together. I sat two seats behind you in American history. Remember? Pulaski, Quinn, Rogers. I'm Matt Rogers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I gotta be going. Well, I shouldn't have stopped you, but I was so glad to see you. Why? Why would anybody be glad to see me? Why, who wouldn't be glad to see the greatest quarterback that Housatonic Falls ever had? Don't tell me you remember that. Why, of course I do. I'll never forget that game against Watertown. But I mustn't keep you. Well, wait a minute. You... You saw the Watertown game? Well, of course I did. I was on the 10-yard line when you made that touchdown. When I found out later that you'd been playing with a broken rib, I just cried. I guess that sounds kind of silly, doesn't it? Say, look, uh, would you like to sit down for a second and, and talk? Yes, I'd love to. Let me dust it off for you. Thanks. This is the second stroke of luck I've had today. It's been a long time since anybody I run across that I knew in school. I sent you a box of candy when you were in the hospital. I didn't put my name to it, though. I just said from an unknown admirer. Oh, yeah. I, I used to get a lot of those. <clears throat> but uh, thanks, anyway. You're welcome. Why didn't you sign your name? You wouldn't have known who I was. I used to see you all the time, but I never could think of anything to say to you. Could have said hello. <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't. I was afraid to even speak to you. I admired you so much. Everybody did. Did is right. That's all gone and forgotten. Why, I don't see how anybody who ever saw you play could forget you, Steve. Just the same they have. The only thing they know now is that I've been out of work for three months and I go around making a nuisance of myself, begging for a job. You mustn't blame yourself for that. I don't. The people who sat in the stands and used to cheer for me and spell out my name. Where are they when you need them? High school hero, eh? You can't eat your scrapbook. Steve, you shouldn't talk like that. 
It hasn't just happened to you. A lot of people in town are out of a job. There's no reason to get bitter about it. Why, you used to be the bravest person I knew. I uh, don't need a lecture. Thank you. I'm out of a job, too. Of course, I never was anybody, but I don't feel the people have turned against me. It's just the way things are. I'm sorry. I guess I'm not very smart. But you ought to remember that from school. Steve, you are too smart. Oh, sure. Smart as a whip. When did you get fired? This morning. That's tough. I don't blame Mr. Higgins. Ever since the mills closed, he's had more salespeople than customers. You know, Mary, you're the first person in years that's treated me like a friend. Can I tell you what really gets me down? What is it, Steve? Well, ever since I was a kid, I was trained to win at anything I did. And now that I'm beaten, it just about kills me. But you're not beaten. How could you be? Anyway, there are different kinds of winning. And one kind of winning is to know how to keep going when things get tough. You ought to know that, Steve. Why, I learned it from watching you. Thanks, Mary. I'm glad you said that. A person has to have somebody admire them once in a while. Now, I guess so. I don't suppose anybody's ever admired me. At least not since my father died. I don't know much about being admired. I guess what I want is for somebody to care for. Well, that shouldn't be hard. You're very sweet. Oh, I didn't mean somebody to care for me. I meant somebody to do things for. Somebody to make you feel that you're needed. And I'm talking too much. No, no, you're not. I, I'm glad you came along just now. You've done me a lot of good. It's been good for me, too. I've had a terrible day, really. First, I got let out of the store, and then... Walking home, I must have dropped my purse somewhere. I can't find it anywhere. You, uh, lost your purse? Yes, sir. I didn't miss it until I got on the bus, and... Oh, don't you worry about it. It'll turn up. Maybe it won't. What did it look like? Just a little thing like that. It wasn't real leather or anything. Is this it? Steve, you found it. Oh, how wonderful. I'm very glad to get it back. It, it had my social security card in it and, and my father's picture. It also had $28 in it. No, it didn't. It didn't have any money. Yes, it did. Why did you do that? Please, Mary, don't cry. You get so desperate, it doesn't even seem like stealing. Sometimes you get into such a spot that you forget who you really are. It takes somebody to remind you. I didn't mean that. Man, why did you give it back? I wanted you to keep it. I wanted to help you. Just once I wanted to be able to do something for you. Mary, you have done something for me. But I'd better be going. Well, can I walk you home? Why, yes, if you want to. That's how I learned that money isn't everything, and success isn't everything. As Mary said, the important thing is to have somebody to care for, somebody to believe in. And that's why I tell everybody that the day I found my wife, well, that was the luckiest day of my life. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, tell me something. Incidentally, have you two ever worked in pictures together? I'm sorry to say we haven't. No? Of course, I'd like to work with John sometime. Well, thank you, Teresa. I'd certainly enjoy working with you sometime. Thank you. You sure you'd like to work with each other? I think we would. Nobody's yeah. anxious to work with me, though. Oh, oh of course. We love oh, well, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Indeed. In the meantime, thanks a lot for a wonderful performance. And now, ladies and gentlemen, back to Kate Smith. <laughs>